P pan p X box x Y yellow y I N G ring ing A M ham am U N G lung ung O R horn or I R bird er E A eat e <laughs>on the top of my board are three vowel teams. We're going to echo them right now together. E, E, G, E. E, A, eat, E. E, Y, K, E. E. Alright. These vowel teams, although made up of different letters, all say the sound E. This is important because the syllable type we've been working on when we were kicked out of school is the double vowel syllable team. A lot of you might remember this, some of you might not. So we're going to just review it real quick or we'll learn it real quick right now and then we're going to continue to work on it. So let's take the word jeep. I'm going to write jeep. I'm going to write it a little smaller so I can keep these vowel teams up here. Remember we talked about the word jeep being a proper noun. So the beginning letter has to be, that's right, capital. So, oh, that's back, that's backwards. Writing upside down sometimes messes me up, not all the time. Okay, I've got the word Jeep. Notice my vowel team in there, okay? The vowel team I have in there is the EE -E vowel team. I'm gonna circle this. All right, that's our double vowel. I'm gonna scoop the word Jeep, mm -hmm, and I'm gonna mark it as a double vowel syllable. I'm pretty sure that's a D. I hope that's not a B. It should be a D. <laughs> so Jeep is a double vowel syllable. Let's try using the other Excuse me, this one and this one, E-A and E-Y in words and we can work on. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to write the word, let's see, how about real, all right? Real is spelled R-E-A-L, real. Notice our double vowel team in here that we're going to circle. We're going to scoop and we're going to mark it as double vowel team, okay? The last team we need to use is this EY. I like using the word key. Key, let's see. K e, k e, key. Key. Now, we're going to circle the vowel team. Scoop it and mark it as a double syllable. Guys, remind your parents why this double vowel team is so important. That's right, the EY doesn't come in the middle of a syllable. It always comes at the end. All right, let's keep going. This story's title is Winter Daydream. As I read and you read along with me, try to picture the story like a movie in your mind. It was a hot, steamy day. School was out for the summer. Most of the kids were thrilled, but Lee was not. He did not care for the heat. He did like to go for a swim with his friends, but he really missed the winter months. In the winter, Lee got to play hockey. 
he could skate all weekend and after school during the week. He had to be at the rink by five in the morning, but he did not mind at all. His dad drove him to the rink and they would eat donuts and have hot drinks on the way there. Lee began to daydream about last season. His team had had a great year. They played well together and worked hard. They won most of their games and made the playoffs. Lee and his friend Pete were the key players on the team. They could both skate quite fast. It seemed that each time Lee passed the puck to Pete, Pete shot it in the net. One of the playoff games went into three overtimes. The next team to score would win the game. All of the players felt weak. It's not easy to skate fast for a long time. Lee's team was short one player because Pete was in the penalty box. It seemed like the other team was going to win the game. Lee stole the puck from the other team. He began to skate and picked up speed. He kept his eyes on the net. He snuck past three players from the other team. He shot the puck at the net and saw it fly into the top corner. Lee's team won the big game. Lee jumped into the air and landed on the ice. All of his teammates leaped on top of him. Lee would never forget this game, not even on hot, steamy summer days. I'm going to read you some questions and tell you my answers. Remember to pause the video and think about your answer before you listen to mine. Maybe you thought of something that I didn't. The title of the story was Winter Daydream. Do you think that was a good title? Why or why not? I think it was a good title because he was sitting around in the summertime dreaming about winter fun. What is this story about? This story is about a boy named Lee who doesn't like the summer much. It is summer and school let out, but all he can do is daydream about his favorite wintertime activity, hockey. Who are the main characters? The main characters are Lee, his dad, and Lee's friend and teammate, Pete. Lee mentions his teammates, but I wouldn't call them main characters. Where does the story take place? Lee is probably at home during his daydream, but his daydream mostly takes place in the ice rink. Is the setting important to the story? The setting is important to the story. The story takes place in the summer and it's very hot. Lee likes the winter much better and so he's starting to think about it. Lee wouldn't dream about the fun he has in winter if he wasn't so hot and steamy. Is there a problem or challenge in the story? There are a couple of challenges in this story. One problem is that it's really hot. Lee doesn't like it like his friends do. He likes to swim with them, but we all know you can't swim with your friends all day, every day. The other problem is Lee's favorite activity only happens in the winter. All he can do is daydream about it. How does the character handle the challenge? Lee thinks about his favorite activity, hockey. He remembers the great season his team had last year. He tells about winning most of the games and even reaching the playoffs. He describes how he shot the winning goal and the team's huge celebration afterwards. All right, friends, we're gonna take a look at some trick words. Um, we're gonna read the words. I'm gonna say a sentence that has the word in it. We're gonna spell them. And we're gonna talk about what makes them so tricky. Because remember, trick words don't really follow the rules that we've been learning about syllables. So, let's check out this first word. The word is whose. Whose picnic table am I sitting at? <laughs> I hope it's mine. Whose. Whose is spelled W-H-O-S-E, whose. It's usually a part of a question, isn't it? Um, if I would look at this word and try to use my syllable types to uh, decode it, 
I see this bossy E here. It would make me think the O would say its own name, but it truly doesn't. Who's? Ooh, ooh. It's not. Whoa. Mm -mm. That's what makes it a trick word, who's. So what I would like you to do is write who's on your paper. W-H-O-S-E. Next one down, we have the word one. W-O-N, one. I won my soccer game yesterday. Maybe my dad will take me to get ice cream. If the place is open. I don't think it is. What are we doing playing soccer anyway? Whatever. If we were to look at the word one, and we saw that it was a closed syllable, it ends in a consonant, right? Let's tap it out using the rules. On, one. No, it's not a name. It's the word one, and it doesn't follow the rules. So let's write the word one, W O. N. Last one I have down here is the word sun. It's not the sun that's shining down on me. It is the sun that I have at home who lives in my house. He's my son because I gave birth to him. All right. <laughs> so the word sun is spelled S O N. If I were to tap this out and spell it using our rules, it would sound like this. S ah, mm, son. No, it's son. It's the word son. So write S O N. Now, if you were writing on paper, I would like you to write each one of these words one more time. Okay, you can trace over them or you can write them again next to the first word. If you have a whiteboard, after you write the words, you can erase them with your finger. So I wrote the word W-H-O-S-E, whose. I can take my finger and say it again. W-H-O-S-E. It's up to you. Depends on the supplies you have. Have fun.